Hi everyone, I'm Susie Dent and I'm here to give you a linguistic upside after what has, let's face it, been a really difficult year. You know, by April we thought the word of the year was bound to be unprecedented because it seemed like everything had already happened by then. But, you know, as the story unfolded, we've had so many more words and so much more vocabulary to deal with, whether it's quarantine or self-isolation or furlough or doom scrolling you know them all already. Um, so I thought I would add some new ones to the mix and particularly ones that describe individuals that have populated the landscape this year. Um, we don't usually choose nicknames or epithets for people in our words of the year um, as dictionary publishers. So I thought this time I would. These are my own personal choices. Most of them are centuries old and most of them come from the forgotten corners of the dictionary. They are old, but in my case, at least not forgotten. So whatever your political persuasion, I know you will find somebody who fits the bill for each of these. I'm going to start with one of my absolute favourites from the 16th century. Uh, that's a mumpsimus. A mumpsimus is someone who insists that they're right, despite clear evidence that they are wrong. Not too dissimilar from a stiff rump. And a stiff rump is an obstinate individual who absolutely refuses to budge. An empleomaniac is someone whose thirst for public power and public office knows no bounds. A quokkawodger is a kind of puppet leader whose strings are entirely pulled by someone else, um, possibly followed by a fart catcher or even a catch fart. Both nicknames for servants centuries ago who followed their master or mistress so closely that they were in line for, well, let's just say they blew with the political wind. That's probably the best way of putting it. Um, what else have we got? We've got an archicrepidarian, one who holds forth on subjects they know absolutely nothing about, and um, a snollygoster. A snollygoster is an unscrupulous politician who abandons integrity in favour of power. I'm just looking down at my list as well. I think the one that probably maybe refers to many of us um, and perhaps some politicians too and you'd have to forgive us all I think for being litibulators. Um, sounds a bit rude but litibulators are people who generally just hide in a corner in an, effect, in an attempt to escape reality as I say I think we've kind of all done that but I'm going to end with some real upsides with some linguistic hope really because there are also words in the dictionary that don't just criticise other people but and are all about beauty and recovery and uh, I'll start with respair. Respair is the much underused twin of despair and respair simply means fresh hope or a recovery from despair which I think is beautiful. Then you will find other beauties like apricity. Apricity being a word I'm determined to get back into popular usage and it simply means the warmth of the sun on a chilly day. Apricity which I think is gorgeous and well what more could we wish for people on Christmas Day um, even if we can't actually get to see those that we love we can at least via Zoom hopefully experience some confelicity and confelicity means joy in other people's happiness. So those are some of my words of the year. I know they don't quite do it justice, but looking through the pages of the dictionary is my oasis. And I recommend a good riffle for any of you out there if you just want a little bit of escape. And um, wish you a really happy end of term if it's not too late. And whatever you're doing, just a really magical, even if it's by yourself, a magical Christmas and a time for respair. Take care.